Okay, so welcome back everybody. So, with the random walk metropolis algorithm in place, that's what we did in the previous video, we can now think of what can we use the samples generated by this algorithm for. And our aim is to do Markov chain Monte Carlo estimates. So we will use these samples, the weekly curves from the previous simulations, we will see it as input for a Monte Carlo estimate. And that will cover two videos and well, let's jump straight in. So we need to think now, how do we turn that into a workable method for Monte Carlo estimation? The first thing we should think about a bit is what do we use for the burn-in period? And we should do that based on these plots. Here, I would think maybe by this time, everything seems to have stabilized and that is 20,000, so a bit before 10,000. In this plot, that is really hard to say. Maybe that is burning, who knows? And similarly here, until about here, something may happen. This is random, so I will just run that a few more times, just that we get a sense of what is a safe burning time, which will work across runs. So that's from another run. 10,000 would still work. Let's do that once more. Here it looks more like something happened at 20,000. Here also 20,000 that moved, maybe that made a difference. And these also take at least 20,000 until they are right. So I think let's just go with 20,000 for the burning period. It is just to make the estimates converge faster. It does not affect correctness, so it does not so much affect what we do. So for now, let's just keep a record. I just write myself a comment here. Burn in 20,000, so two times 10 to the four steps. Then I want to throw out some of the things I put in just for monitoring. So I think we have now determined what we will do. So I will not track acceptance probabilities and I will also not store all of the X values. I will replace this with something else in a second. And all of these plots for now can also go. Now it will run a bit faster and not do anything. And the first thing we could do is we could make it output a plot like this one, say every thousand steps or so. Let's try that. And I will actually pop it all into a function. So let's do run random walk metropolis is a function and n, n could be the argument and step is how often do we want pictures. And then we have all of these and indent that correctly. This we don't need then anymore. That I move a bit down. And here I do run random walk metropolis and I need to just say how many steps. So here I had 10 to the 5, which is 100,000. Let's just do that again. Or well, for test, let's do half of this picture, 5 times 10 to the 4. And if I do a picture every 1,000 steps, then I would get 50 pictures and we get a bit of a sense of how that evolves in time. So let's pop that here. Here is the picture command and the X I'm no longer updating. So here we would pop in the current state, which is theta J. Here, every 1000 steps, so I have the variable steps to tell me how many. So if number of current step modulo steps equals zero, then we do that. So let's redefine that and run that. Oh, now it works. Now we see that there was something like a burn-in period and now it is just wiggling along. And these wiggles are really what we are after. So we have the line, which is kind of where we could have drawn it by hand. Let me run that again. And at the beginning, it takes a bit of time to move to the correct location, but you see it actually does this. But these wiggles, it keeps moving that we will use as a measure of the uncertainty that the variance of these wiggles will be the posterior variance from the Bayesian estimate. So that's what we need. Before we do that properly, I want to just turn that into a movie that we can see that a bit with more steps and running more fluently. So there is a library called AV, I believe, library AV that exists. And I believe I can just use a command like that where the key is 
the thing which we have just run. And then instead of drawing the pictures to the screen, that command here will collect them all into a movie, which will then be in this file, and then I can play it and we can look at it. And I chose just with height and frame rate to match the one of my movies here. That is easier to include. And I tried in the past, if you don't set verb is equal to false, you get lots and lots of output, none of which is easy to understand. So I just disable that output. So that looks nearly good. So I think what we should do is we should run that a bit longer and we should definitely have more frequent pictures. So let me see. That is 100,000 steps. So if I would do that as I did it currently, I would get 100 pictures and with a frame rate of 30 pictures per second, that would be three seconds. I tried 200. Now it seems happy. Okay, I'll run that, so it will take a while, but I will be right back. So I've added the display of J in the bottom right corner, and it does converge a bit slowly, but it seems to converge to a stationary distribution. So because this is random, let's try again. So I'm just running the same code again, but with a different seed. And you see again, we converge and then we just wiggle about a bit. So this is how I expect it should be. So while this was running, that took about a minute, I entertained myself in adding some code to put J, the current step in the bottom right corner. You see here J equals 30 from testing. That will be a proper J values in this video. And I learned that the press warnings can be used here to avoid these warnings, which I always get when I try to plot the zero values from daily in a logarithmic plot because they can't fit. So coming back to these videos, the next steps are now I want to use that process, which is depicted here and which is the Markov chain, which comes out of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm for that example to compute some Markov chain Monte Carlo estimates. And the first one is I want to just compute the expectation of lambda, so the expectation of this wiggly line under the posterior distribution. So we take the data into account, that's what's happening in this video. Then there is still uncertainty that's represented by the wiggles in this video. And I can get the expectation of this distribution of the line just by taking the average over what's seen in this video. And what I should do is I should leave out the first 20,000 or so steps because that is the burn-in period and they would distort the average because they are all over the place. So that's one thing I want to do. Okay, so how do we do that? Because I liked that my code can produce a video, I will leave that in place and I will just copy that function and make one which computes averages instead. So here, what do we need to do? We need to keep track of what does the line for lambda do. So I copied that up here. Should probably have had this here all the time. That is just the times where I evaluated lambda. And here I type L mean make a numeric vector with lengths which matches this. Then we just need to update this. So steps we don't need, but burn in we do need. And let's just fix this to what I said. And then that we cannot find it go while we have this in, this in the other copy of the function. Here I just need to add L mean is L mean plus the code for lambda. So I need to be a bit careful. I only want to do that if j is greater than burn in. And at this point, I will have the sum. And to get the mean, I need to divide that by how many steps I have. And that is n minus burn in, because the first burn in steps I'm ignoring here. I do n in total, so I have n minus burn in terms added up here. So that is the result. Let's just return that as maybe a list mean is L mean because I want to add the standard deviation in a minute. For now, let's just run that. So I think I pop a two here that we have both functions. Let's do 100,000 steps for now. I want to also keep track of how long that takes. 
if I run it like that, then we can see that it took nearly 20 seconds. Good, let's try to make a plot. So that's the plot of the data with the warning in place. And then I do lines, and now I should have saved my S. Does not matter, I can make my own. And then I do lines S and M dollar mean, and maybe line with two and color red. So that is the mean over the weekly line averaged over 100,000 steps, which is probably not enough, and with the burn in period of 20,000. So let's retry that. That took 20 seconds. So if I run a million steps, that will take two minutes and I can wait two minutes. So let's do a million steps and see whether that changes. So here is a new run. And if we plot that, we see the curve did change a bit. So running it longer made a difference. So the next thing I want to do is I want to compute the standard deviations, and then we can plot a band around this line, maybe two standard deviations wide or so, so that we get a sense of how certain this estimate is. So how do we do that? For standard deviation, we need not only the mean, but we need also the mean of the squares. So let's call that mean two. Then here we do mean two is mean two plus lambda squared. Let's just draw that, that we don't need to compute it twice. So that's plus L and that's plus L squared. And down here we do L mean two is L mean two divided by the number of steps. And the standard deviation is the square root of the mean of the square minus the mean itself squared. If we were totally proper, we would need to multiply this with n minus 1 over n, but given n is a million, we don't need to bother. That will make no difference. So to be safe, let's try that out with a small run. I do 10 to the 5 here. That should go rather quickly. So here we go. That plot is okay. And now m should have a new field standard deviation. So we can augment the plot and plot also a band around the line. Let me just figure out how to do that. So here is what I came up with. So let me run through that step by step. So I first do the plot of the data as before. Then I want to plot two standard deviation bands. So I take the mean minus two standard deviations and the mean plus two standard deviations at the lower and upper bounds. Then polygon fills an area between lines. And what I do is for the X coordinate, I once go forwards and then backwards for the upper edge and the lower edge. And then for the Y coordinates, I use the upper edge first. And then for the second half, I use the lower edge in reverse order. So that goes around this red region clockwise. That is just a light red. And that means I don't want to border. Then I plot the lower, middle and upper lines on that. And because this now wiped out some of the points, I just put the points again on top. So this is what I get. And you see that is now the red line with some uncertainty bounds. But you also see if that holds, so far I've only run that for 100,000 steps. I want to rerun that for a million. But if that holds, there are two flatter bits here, which we can look what they correspond to, which seem to be actual effects because the uncertainty band would not allow for the decay to go just like this. And uncertainty down here is higher. That may be partially property of the logarithmic plot because range of a given size shows larger here than here, but that may also be caused by there just being less less data because there is fewer cases. And here it looks like we have already passed the second peak, but only in our model. Our model has flaws, so that is not certain, but that looks certainly encouraging the way that goes down here. So let's rerun the whole code with a million samples. Let's even do two million samples and let's see what we get. So I just run that. That took a while, but here is what we get. So this plot, you see it has changed a bit. I switch back and forth a bit. So that was the old plot with the small sample size. That is the plot with 2 million samples. And 
you'll see the character stays the same, but the width of the bands has slightly changed. So that is one of our main results. So in this plot, let us just go again through what that is. So that shows a property of the posterior distribution from our model. So that is made up of modeling assumptions. What do these red curves look like? And that takes into account the data. And these together give a posterior distribution. And then we use the random walk metropolis algorithm to generate samples from this posterior distribution. And by averaging very many samples, we got the mean and the variance or standard deviation. And this band here shows both together. So the middle of the band is the posterior mean of lambda and the band with the mean plus or minus two posterior standard deviations. So the total width is actually four standard deviations, but that counts as a two standard deviation bands band because that is the half width. Good, so that is one result.